Hey guys, welcome back to the Watch With Us channel. I'm here with my boy, Anthony Kozlowski. What's up, buddy boy? How's it going, man? Good to see you. <laughs> I haven't seen you in, what, four months? Per like, face-to-face, -face, anyway. I know, I know. Well, even we haven't even done the video in a while. We've been, obviously, talking on the phone a lot, but it's good to see you. You too, man. You too. I, uh, I actually grew my hair in during this COVID thing. I was going to let it go the whole time, and it just I, it got so unruly. <laughs> so I made a bet with my daughter, and I let her give me a mohawk. So I had a mohawk for two days. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, too bad. Too bad we didn't do this a couple of days ago. Then <laughs> I should have done it with the mohawk, man. You should have. And then you know what's so funny is my uh, my my two boys were like, "You got to shave it. You got to shave it. It looks stupid," you know. <laughs> so I I couldn't keep it. I was going right, to. right. <laughs> so how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. I I did venture out and got get a haircut a couple of weeks ago, but you know <laughs> it was it was needed, and I have a good friend who cuts hair. So yeah, well you're pretty you're pretty like vogue about yourself, man. So yeah, I, it was rough. You, were, you probably were in a, in a state of disarray. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> it was in bad shape. <laughs> we should have done it then, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so you reached out to me earlier today. There's, a, there's some, a little bit of Patek Philippe news. Yeah, yeah, interesting stuff. You know, I mean, uh, it's, it's polarizing to say the least. I, it, it, what I'm reading and what I'm seeing is very similar when AP came out with the code uh, 1159. People are beating the crap out of this watch. Really? Uh, yeah, I haven't seen anyone say they like it yet. But here's the thing. It's a Patek Philippe. It's a blue dial. It's stainless steel. And it's a limited edition. It's going to go for two times retail on the secondary market, 100%. Despite so, being ugly. <laughs> all right. So I don't follow the high end like I used to, right? Mm -hmm. Like I lived in the high end for, for yeah. 15 years, 16 years. And like, I totally, this, like, this would have been like, I would have been the one sharing the news with everybody. Oh, is this protected this or AP did that or whatever. You know, I'm out of that world a bit now, you know, with what I'm doing. And a buddy of mine sent me a picture uh, two days ago of that weekly calendar that came out last year. The 5212. Uh, and he's like, dude, I love it. And he, <laughs> he's one of my best friends in the world. And one of the reasons I absolutely love this guy is we couldn't be different in terms yeah. of taste on watches. And I, and we've got back and forth. I, I, if I can, I might show the text thread. It was hysterical. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that is the stupidest complication on any watch I've <laughs> ever seen. Right. So, and then you hit me up earlier today with this piece and I'm thinking, I love it. I really? absolutely love it. Um, yeah. I don't know why I'm not, I'm not the guy that gets all jazzed about Patek Philippe. You know, I, I, I get it. I respect it. I love it. Um, but if I had an extra 50 grand that I wanted to like throw at a watch, it wouldn't be at a Patek. Right. You know, it's just me. Like, I'd rather have a Moser. I'd rather have a MB&F or a Louis Monet. Like, I'm, I'm kind of into that weird stuff, right? Sure. When I saw this one, I'm like, stainless steel, home run, because I can't stand gold. I can't stand white gold. Uh, blue dial, home run. I love that pattern on the dial. Um, and it's funny, because you and I did not talk about this right. before we hit record. Mm -hmm. which is the way we want to do it because I want to know what you're right. thinking and you want to know what I'm thinking. Right. So tell me, what do you, what do you not like about this? Watch? Okay, so, I keep looking this way because the, the watch is right there. Yeah, on my yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I like, I like the dial. I think the dial is very cool. I love the texturing. I love the, the Arabic numerals. They're applied as they would be with the Patek. Very nice. What I don't like, the case is extremely underwhelming. It's a very basic case with high polishing. There's really no angles to it. I have a pet peeve with an exhibition case back when it's um, like applied just font on the crystal, on the sapphire crystal. I hate that. I think that's super tacky. I can't stand the strap on it. It's just, it's just extremely underwhelming. And the, the fact that they're charging $28,500 or something like that for it, when the the 5711 just a just a couple years ago had a price reduction for a little bit when it wasn't as hot it went to 25,000 then now it's back up to at 30,000 look 
that's a lot of money for that watch. It's absurd. I personally don't think it's worth that, but it's an iconic design from the 70s and sells very well. Why is this watch almost the same price in steel with the strap? I mean, the movement is what it is. It's, it's a three hand with date and it's almost $30,000 just because it's a limited edition. I mean, it's a Patek that's a limited edition. They could have charged 50,000, but I would have, I would have been so much happier to see them if this watch came in at like $18,000 and was a limited edition. Cause then they're like, it's really not about making money. This is to give to, to collectors or something like that. But I'm just like, come on. You could have done more for 30000 So you, you hit two points that I 100% agree with. The crystal case back is, I'm going to say something I shouldn't on YouTube. It, it sucks. I mean, I'm, 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 going, to res, I'm going to bite my tongue. It, honest to goodness, looks like something that would come out of a Cracker Jack barrel, right? Like a box. Like, it just it's cheesy. It's, it's yeah. awful. It's cheesy. They should have kept it clear. They could have done some sort of etching. They could have, they could have done the engraving on that case back somewhere or something, but the crystal case back with that stupid print for mm -hmm. a $28,000 watch is beyond asinine. Right. Then like why, not, why not make it a hunter case back where you could have a nice engraving and have it flipped oh over my God. the movement. Right. Like, hundred percent. That would have, that would have made all the sense in the world. Make it classy, make it Patek. Right. And then I agree with you on the price point. I, you know, look, it's Patek. They could have charged 50 grand for this. They would have sold every piece. And on the secondary market, they'd be going for 85, but stainless steel, three hand watch. I love the watch. I, I like the fact that the case is underwhelming, to be honest with you in this particular case, in this particular watch, I should say, I like the case. As it is, I like everything the way it is, except for the price in the case back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they should have come in at they should have come in at zero dollars, <laughs> and, and and pick their top one thousand Patek collectors and given it as a gift for that matter, <laughs> right? Right. It's or at least I mean, bring it in at an Aquanaut price point. I don't understand right. the price. Bring it in at fifteen. Bring it at eighteen. Bring it at nineteen. Yeah, I mean it's a limited edition, so let's face it. It doesn't matter. Even if I had the money to buy it, I'm not eligible because each retailer is going to maybe get one or maybe get two. And those are going to go to the guys that buy the, the grand complications from Patek, the big pieces. So, I mean, it is what it is, but I just think to surprise this is really cool because, you know, for the high end watch community, it's been very quiet. Everyone's canceling shows and canceling releases. So to see something, uh, it's been fun, but I just felt like it was a bit underwhelming for, you know, uh, a limited edition at this price point. Yeah. I mean, you would expect that the first watch they release of 2020 after the whole Basel cancellation and all that stuff, I, I would have expected like an $800,000, you know, 10 piece limited edition or something. Right. Right. You no, know? but you know what? I guess it is kind of cool that, you know, they did something pretty simple but actually, they did uh, a three-hand limited edition for their New York exhibition at the Cipriani event a couple of years ago. It was a pilot's watch that was a three-hand. So, I mean, they're really not, like, going that far outside the box with this. But it's just a steel watch and a blue dial. It's just like, come on. Like, on paper, <laughs> you know it's going to be a home run. It doesn't even matter what it looks like. Right. So, well, it's, it's better than the, uh, the code, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's better than the AP code. Yeah, yeah. For it's, sure. it's certainly a lot better than that travel time pilot watch they did a couple of years back. Well, they just, I think I was reading, if you go to uh, Patek's main website, I think they just released a new dial variation of their their alarm travel time grand complication. That's like $250,000 and it has four four crowns on it. I'm just like, oh, come on. <laughs> like, the tech, I understand you can do whatever you want, but you're not making pilot watches. And I don't care if you made one way back in the day, you're not fooling anybody. You're no, not a it's, pilot watch company. I still, to this day, if somebody gave me one of those pilot Patek's for free, I, I still would, you know, I'd probably figure out how much I could sell it for so I could buy a bunch of other cool watches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's, it's, I don't know, man, it's, it is what it is, but I, 
I agree. I, I totally agree that the, the price is absurd. I, I think the case back looks cheap and cheesy. Mm -hmm. I love the dial. I love the, I love the, the front on look of the watch to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if somebody said, Hey, make yourself a steel Patek, that might be it. You know, yeah. I think yeah. they could have did a bit more with the, the case. So, I mean, you, you, you might not be familiar with it, but the 5205 is a very nice case. Um, and it, if they just would have did like just a little bit more detail on the case of the watch, I think it could have been a little bit better. It just, yeah. it's like, I feel like they did this almost, they knew that people were going to be underwhelmed and just talk about it. Cause look, I mean, if it was, if, unless it was something absolutely amazing, anything else in between, we probably wouldn't even be doing a video of it. I would have no. just give you a call or shot you a text message. Make, you see the new paddock? It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. You yeah, know, right. That would be really amazing or really ugly for us to be talking about it. So. Yeah, well, maybe that's their point, right? Maybe, yeah. maybe that's it. Maybe, you know, maybe by coming out with something that's somewhat absurd, get some buzz going about it. And who knows, next week they might drop something that's, you know, spectacular. Mm -hmm. And we're already talking about them. So I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's I, people I think Paddock and Rolex are going to be smarter than me this year. What's that? I think Paddock and Rolex are going to do some releases this year. I don't know. What do you, what could Rolex do? I think, uh, well, let, I mean, for sure they had a whole lineup planned for 2020 and then obviously everything uh, got canceled. They, they are already working on 2021. So they're going to have to release some stuff. Otherwise they're going to have, so many watches backlogged. I guarantee yeah, but, in a few months they release a few pieces. But, but Rolex being Rolex, and maybe you know, maybe I might piss off some Rolex like fanboys here. Um, and I get it. Look, if you if that's what you love, but I can't conceive of what Rolex could do where I'd be like stupid jazzed about it. They'd have no. to come, you know, like you know, when they came out with that with a sky dweller, everybody was flipping out. I'm like, ugh. Yeah, you know, like. I don't know. To me, Rolex, Rolex, like to me, can't come out with something that really excites me because they're going to be the same in 20 or 30 years. And that's what you love them for. Right. I don't love them for stuff they're coming out with. You know what I mean? Uh, I love them for the sub. I love them for the, you know, Daytona or the GMT or whatever it may be. I, I, I can't see them like having like a new introduction where it no. blows me away and I'm stupid excited. I guarantee whether it's this year or next year, they'll come out with like a steel and gold Daytona, but uh, an Everose so a Rolosaur. You know, they'll do very basic, small changes and right. people go crazy over it. That's, what, that's what I mean. Like they'll, they'll take what works for them, they'll tweak it and boom, this is new, right. which is awesome for Rolex, right? Like uh -huh. it just, when it happens and I see the news, I'm like, okay. You know, like, but I, you know, it's so, it's like, cause they have the power to do anything and yet they choose not to. And I think maybe that's part of their strength is always sticking to their core DNA and not going totally out. Think so. Imagine they came out with like a limited edition, uh, an exact recreation of like Paul Newman's Daytona. Oh, like, or, like a, or like a 1960s mill sub or something like yeah, that. Or, um, exactly. Exactly. Like people would lose their minds lose their minds. I agree. That's, that's what I'm getting at is that like, they've got some really, really cool things that they did back in the fifties and sixties. And, and every three years they change it or every four years they change it. Right. And it's led us to what they have today, which is great. It's their success. That's why they're the strongest watch company in the world next to Patek. If, if not stronger than Patek, what if they like totally like just went in a time machine and said, you know, here's a riveted bracelet, drilled lug holes, you know, domed crystal, uh, you know, pre-sub-sub -sub or something like that. Like, that would be... Right. I, and, and you know what? I think that's what they do with Tudor. I think that's... Yeah. Tudor's like Tudor's like the bad boy brother that can get away with doing an old ceramic case or doing a bronze wash or they redid the Black Bay and the Black Bay 58, so, you know, a thinner a thinner, smaller dive watch. I mean, that's what they use Tudor for, for. And you know what? Tudor is an amazing company, but totally. it's not Rolex. And you know what? I, I think Rolex plays it so safe 
And that's why, and they've been doing it for years. And that's why people freak out when a new GMT Master 2 comes out with a different bezel configuration. Yeah, but, but to me, the, the change in the bezel isn't exciting enough, mm -hmm. personally, right? right? You know, to me, it would be mind-blowing if they, if, they, if they took a little cue from Tudor, right? You know, Tudor's like that brother you don't expect to succeed, yet somehow he succeeds. <laughs> You yeah. know, but still the family gives them no credit. Right. <laughs> right. You know, right. where Rolex just like, you know, studies yeah. hard and sticks to his books and becomes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it, it would be nice to see Rolex redesign like uh, the Milgauss. You know, I yeah. think it's kind of, you know, it actually sells very well now. So obviously I, I work with London Jewelers. And tell tell me the date, Just. I'll climb through the Zoom camera right now. I'll strangle you. <laughs> no, no, the date just sells well too, but Milgauss for years wasn't selling. It's starting to pick up now because it's kind of, it trickles down. You can't get one steel watch, you go to the next. But I think that watch should be completely redesigned to one of the original uh, versions of the Milgauss. It'd be really cool. Kind of like, a, had more of like a waffle or a textured dial. So, I mean, they, they have some watches that need to be kind of redone. So yeah. it would be cool. I think, I think it'd be really great if they, if, if they did something to shock people. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, you know, getting, I mean, again, and I don't mean it derogatorily, but there are people who freak out when, okay, they go from, you know, this bezel to that bezel or, or a three line dial to a four line dial. People go bananas, but it's most people looking and go, it's the same watch. Right. So right. I would love for them to blow people's minds one day, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, kind of like Patek doing uh, a pilot watches, honestly, like we, jo we were joking about it, but you know what? That was so not Patek Philippe, and I think right. that's why people were talking about it. Well, you know, you know, it's funny because when that watch came out, right, like I was at Basel that year, and I saw it, and I was like, what? You yeah. know, like, <laughs> and then as, like, literally we're staring at the window looking at it for the first time ever, you know, I'm thinking to myself, is that, what is, is that an IWC or a Zenith? What, what is yeah. going on, Right. And then like, we're laughing about it. We're making all these cracks and jokes. And as we're walking away, I said, I looked at my buddy, I go, you know what though? I go, they're going to sell every one of those. I said, and they're going to sell at a premium on the secondary market because guess what? They s screw everybody, right? We're Patek and we can do it. it. Rolex should do something like that. And, and yeah. I, I doubt they will. Like, I, would, I mean, how, how, how like sick would it be if Rolex all of a sudden comes out with a, a perpetual calendar? Right. 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 Like, you know, in, in whether it be the day date case or whatever, but they come out with like a sick, ridiculous watch that just blows everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that would be so cool. Yeah. I mean, and they've done pieces like that in the past. If they just recreate that, would be really cool. Like yeah. just put it in like a Cellini line, but change the case and put a really cool movement in there. Finally, the Cellini will sell, you know? Right. <laughs> but, right. you know the other thing is too, is that you're right. They, they do – it's not like they don't have really sick stuff in, in their historic collection. Mm -hmm. Like they've got day date moon phases, right? Like triple date moon phases. They've got, they've got some really cool things. I mean, I mean, heck I did, I did a uh, NTH, you know, watch, ga watch gauge watch that was based on the zero graph, right? The zero graph they made like 10 of, right? Like do something like that. It's a chronograph with a California dial. Yeah. I mean, it's just, if they did like a 2021 version of the zero graph, forget about it. They would literally blow people's minds. But. It could even be like a concept piece that they did in the past. Just make it into a line like Tudor did with the P01. And I think that right. watch, I don't like that watch. I think it's <laughs> ugly. But you know what? It's cool that they did something different. And when they put that out there, everyone was talking about it. Totally. We almost wonder, it's like Rolex is at a point where they like print money, basically. I mean, everything sells. They make more watches than anyone on the planet, and yet they're the most desirable. They almost don't want to kind of veer off that track. I, I have an idea. I'll put this out there right now, and this, this is like a direct message right to the, like the people at Rolex. Anthony and I will come work for you, and we will develop your, you know, what do you want to call it, prototype collection yeah. or, you know, mind below collection, and we will come out with some crazy stuff that will not only make you money, but make you like even stronger if that's possible. Absolutely. I'm sure there's <laughs> many people that can do the same, but why not have John and I? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You know, <laughs> I don't think anybody else deserves it, to be honest with you. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, so that's kind of the thoughts on the new Patek. Yeah. 
What's the reference number? Uh, 6007. And then it's a steel model, so it'd be slash A. Yeah. I think uh, from what I was reading, it's kind of like uh, inspired from a piece. It was a 6006, I think. Honestly, I tried to read through it, and it's kind of – it's for the, the – I saw that. The 6006 was a black dial. It had a, se a sub a sub-second. I don't know why they even mentioned that because, to me, it's right. a completely different watch. Right. Um, you know, I, I dig – for the uh, – uh, their new manufacturing facility. So yeah, so, I mean, that's a whole other conversation, right? They put a five, $600 million into a new 10-story manufacturing facility. Mm -hmm. um, look, it, it, looking at the watch head-on, I think it's fantastic. I think if it came in at 18000 bucks, we're not getting one at 18000 at 28000 right. or at 50000 you and I, right? Like, it's going, to, it's going to the clients, like you said, who are buying the, the grand complication kind of stuff. So why come out at 30? Right. And why the hell have that case back? Ugh, awful. And <laughs> listen, I'm a huge long jeans fan, but it, if I saw that watch in a long jeans case, I'd be like, oh, that's a nice, that's a nice watch. It's a nice style. Right. Is it $1, at $1,800? $1, yeah, exactly. Right. With an exactly. ETA, you'd be like, yeah, it's a good looking watch. Oh, the case back looks like crap, but. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh. Yeah, man. Well, I'm glad we got to hook up. Yeah, I think man, we, me too. I think me we need too. to do this a bit more. Absolutely. And you know what? We say that every time, but we're, 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 hopefully some new content will come out. And you know what? Everything's opening up on Long Island, and uh, I'll be out soon, and I'll swing by, and we can just shoot the shit, and then we can maybe just film something too. That sounds good to me. And, and to be honest with you, I'm, I'm ready to come to Queens, man. I know, I'm not cool. afraid. Cool. <laughs> I'm, not, yeah. I'm not afraid of you Queens, city folks. Queens isn't, Queens isn't bad. Not I'm not bad. afraid of you, you city <laughs> folk. Last time I was in Queens, I ate crickets, man. Yeah, that's uh, not for me. Not for me. <laughs> you guys are weird, you city people. <laughs> well, you picked it up off the street and ate it. That was your <laughs> No, man. It was in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you wearing right now, by the way? Uh, Rolex, Daytona. Cool. Got the Formex. That's our ambiguous uh, wrist check. Yeah. <laughs> so. Always forgetting to do that. Always, but, man. Uh, cool, man. Well, I had fun doing this, and uh, we'll, we'll set it up again, and uh, we'll get some of the other guys on the channel to do it as well. Sounds good. Listen, everybody, let us know what you think of the new Patek. Let us know if you'd spend 28000 and change on it. Mm -hmm. um, let us know if you get one. If you yeah. do, yeah. if you do, you have your own series here on Watch, uh, Watch With Us. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> if nothing else, at least we'll interview you, and you can send it to us for a review. And then um, uh, let's also start some guesses. What do you think the first one that pops up on the secondary market is going to go for? Oh, so write that down below. Can I throw my guess in or no? Absolutely. I think 43,000. I think it will go for in the forties. And then after that, they'll keep going up. I agree with you. I agree with you. So, all right, cool guys. Listen, thank you so much for taking the time. I hope this was entertaining, educational, and uh, if nothing else, Anthony, and I look like jackasses and hadn't made you laugh. Um, do your best. <laughs> yeah. Not, maybe not make you laugh, but look like a jackass. Hey, well, I'm a natural at that, man. So uh, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell button, follow Anthony at the uh, Watch With Me channel and okay. on Watch With Me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and all right. John and watch Gage and watch with us. Right on. Thank you guys so much. Hope you had fun. Take care. See you, Ant. Later.